Coming up, the weekly pocket check, I get an amazing new sweet giant fixed blade knife, and we take a look at some recent acquisitions. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. One of my favorite comments from this past week was from Cheese Wizard, uh, Cheech Wizard 7564. He says, just the thing to hang on the arm of my wheelchair. Yeah, I'm that guy. And if you're wondering what that is, it's the giant Arkansas toothpick from Cold Steel. This was a comment on that video. And I love this. Um, were I in a wheelchair, uh, I would be the same. I would be that guy, too. I would be like you, Cheech Wizard. Uh, you better believe it. Uh, you got to have some sort of weapon on your chariot. And uh, I think a double edged 13 inch blade uh, is a great start. So thanks, uh, Cheech Wizard, for that comment. Next up uh, from Hector, uh, one of my favorite characters, by the way, uh, from the uh, Iliad, uh, uh, Hector VX5YC. He says, Hi, Nuff Knife Junkie. I just stumbled across your channel. I'm new. Now he's commenting on. Uh, the fixed blade uh, collection video or one of them. And he says, I just stumbled across your channel. I'm new. So please forgive me. All those knives are beautiful. Thank you, sir. However, can they all be used in the field or is it for collecting? I would be concerned about ruining them, hoping for some education. Uh, well, Hector, they are all definitely um, field worthy or would do awesome in the field. However, I am a collector, so I don't actually use them, unfortunately. It, it would it'd be like a guy who collects Ferraris and never races them. Um, <clears throat> that's kind of me. I have a collection of great knives that I love, many of them, most of them, robust, tactical or outdoor knives. And I just don't lead that lifestyle. However, uh, I, I do appreciate the kit. So, um, Hector, keep watching and check out some of the other collection videos. I have collection videos, uh, full collection videos of my slip joints. This is from about a year ago at this point, so they've all expanded. But my slip joints, my folders, my high-end folders, my budget folders, uh, my fixed blades. The one I haven't done is swords, machetes, and other implements of chaos. But I will get to that one eventually. Check out uh, the rest of those. Uh, collection videos. Hector, thanks for uh, commenting and thanks one and all for watching the videos over the past week and commenting. It's greatly appreciated. That said, time to get to a pocket check. What's in his pocket? Let's find out. Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. In my pocket today, front right, of course, the starring role uh, was the Dirk Pinkerton designed artisan cutlery Kami. K-A-M-I. Kami is a kukri maker uh, in Nepal or Nepalese. That is what they call the people who make kukris. And you can see uh, the influence in this knife, Dirk Pinkerton, a, um, uh, what do you want to call it? A student of history, a student of blade design throughout history and different cultures. He loves mashing up. Uh, he's, uh, <laughs> I've said this before, it's like the Jeet Kundo of knife making for him. He takes what works from different uh, cultures uh, and different historical periods, puts them together in modern EDC knives and custom made fixed blades that he makes. I have a small but growing collection of his fixed blades and I'm, I'm so into him. Uh, Dirk is definitely in my top three for designers of knives out there designer slash makers and this new one from artisan cutlery uh, really takes the cake for me it's s35 vn i love that recurve which by the way don't be a wimp about the recurves if you like them get them use them there they are not easy they are not not easy <laughs> they're they are easy to keep sharp they are easy to hone all you have to do is get the right materials uh the right kind of sharpening things uh oval round or the triangle sharp makers all of those work great on recurves the thing that's difficult are big wide stones but how many of us are using big wide stones to sharpen um maybe many of us i do not uh, but so don't be afraid about the the recurve that blade there is s35 vn keeping this uh in the what you know in the high end range a couple of years ago which is now um high end you know affordable 
somewhat, but it's also got the titanium frame lock and the giant chamfers that uh, Mr. Pinkerton is known for. It makes these uh, handles very comfortable and feel contoured, uh, but they give you a little bit more feedback than contouring. Um, I I like contouring, and, and it's definitely an expensive process, especially in titanium. But I like the feel, like the contour feel with uh, while still having the flat surfaces. It just ensures that the blade is, the handle is not going to roll in your hand. Um, Any speaking of the handle here, the ergonomics are outstanding. Uh, in regular standard um, saber grip, it's very comfortable like this. Uh, and then in reverse grip, of course, you have this big thumb uh, platform uh, for really you know getting a lot of strength behind uh, any sort of uh, reverse grip thrust or downward um, action you might need to might need to use you know uh, i'm not sure what you're going to use this for maybe you're fighting maybe you're opening up a 55 gallon drum full of uzis as you cross the border or as someone tries to cross the border uh, and you need that thumb there otherwise you're going to slip onto the blade and you're going to really hurt yourself uh, you got a flipper really excellent action and a thumb plate or thumb disc. I, I cannot recommend this knife more. And, and if you are going to get this and you're going to cut cardboard all day long and you're concerned about that thumb disc getting in the way, it might, but you can remove it. You don't need it there. A and B, you can probably find something uh, in the aftermarket that would actually sit up there as a little um, uh, low profile wave feature. I've seen that on many other knives and I'll, I'll be showing something like that later on one of Dirk's other knives. Anyway, I'm so in love with this knife. I love it. Can't get it out of my pocket. That's the artisan cutlery Kami. Next up, another one uh, that I'm enthralled with, uh, is the new Jack Wolf knives. And, and I've had this before <laughs> the Viper on the first release, but this second release with the red, uh, dark matter and the dark acid wash blade and bolsters is just stunning to me. I, I can't get over it. This is something I love looking at. It's um, more than any other Jack Wolf knife, I got to say. And I love pretty much, I mean, I love them all. The Ultim on, on my uh, Pioneer Jack, I'm not crazy about, but I opted for that because I didn't have any Ultim. Uh, but for Jack Wolf knives, I like looking at this like it's a painting. I got to say that sounds corny, but I just love the way this thing looks. I keep saying it's like an artifact. It's like an antique. I can't quite figure out what it's like. Now I'm saying it's like a painting, whatever it is, uh, since I can't quite nail down what I love about this, uh, about the looks of this. Um, suffice it to say, I find it beautiful, but it's an incredibly uh, useful and um outstanding design for an everyday carry knife. And, and I would venture to say I could have this as my everyday carry, not carry the fixed blade, not carry the locking blade and all that. And I would be absolutely fine, even if I had to go to Home Depot and cut through some thick rope or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> this thing would do great. They are refined, but they are also super robust. You have incredible action on this, crisp at every station. Um, you've got the full height hollow ground downward swept uh, worn cliff, which gives you a, a lot of life in that worn cliff as you sharpen through up at the tip. That's where you're going to use it even more. Uh, so you'll maintain that worn cliff shape. But until you get there, you are getting incredible trapping action in that triangle created uh, between the spine, the downward angled blade, and whatever material you're you're cutting. So this thing is awesome in, in all ways. I love it. Uh, but you know me, I, I am shallow enough to, or I'm a man enough to admit I am shallow and I love uh, just looks of knives. And to me, this thing with its triple fluted bolster there, it's double fluted bolster there and the antique acid wash. It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. And of course it ships with the, uh, with all the accoutrement that you expect from a Jack Wolf knife, including the luscious and uh, form form fitting leather pouch. Love that thing. All right, next up on me today, one that kind of started it all. And this is, I say that a lot about a lot of different knives. This started, this and the uh, Kramer Custom Voodoo started my everyday carry of fixed blade knives. Uh, this is the, um, and this is the, what started the whole Nova series, right? This is the EDC Tonto from, um, from Hogtooth Knives. I had this on me 
uh, over my little beach weekend we had recently uh, because it's so small and well, not that small, but I mean, it's so discreet. The package is discreet. And because this has the sort of rubberized G10 uh, handle scales, you can barely feel the rubberization, but it doesn't have any of the um, Anzo grooving that you get with most uh, hog tooth knife knife handles like this it also means the the pommel is less bulbous so this is a great light summer carry for you know bathing suits or shorts or whatever so i had this on me and i've had it on me uh for the week since i i love this knife so much and uh so yeah i've been carrying that it gets busted out a lot for use because yeah it's a fixed blade and uh some sometimes people are a little oh a fixed blade knife they're a little uh, arrest arrested by the vision of seeing that was a weird way of saying it but it weirds them out when they see you reach under your shirt and pull out a fixed blade knife uh, but it's small discreet useful and beautiful so people don't seem to care much actually they seem to care less about this than than they would a knife like this uh in my experience you flip open a 3.6 or 3.7 inch uh aggressive looking knife and people are like a little bit oh uh but you draw it out you draw out a fixed blade, a small fixed blade like this, and use the blade discreetly. They're not freaking out. Okay, last up on me. This would definitely make them freak out. This is the Shielden uh, Scythe XL, uh, designed by um, uh, Justin Carvin of Tier 1 uh, and DC Blades, and his partner, uh, whose name escapes me at the moment, but I know he goes by uh, Old Squirrel Knives, and they do really cool work together. This one is a beauty. Um, you know what? I am not sure if he, I'm not sure if Old Squirrel is the DC Knives design partner, but I know he has made a lot of the knives. So I'm just going to leave it there. And, and, and I will do my research and find out. I, I'll give Justin a, a call. But anyway, this is a shield and it's incredible. I was talking about contouring this thing beautifully contoured titanium handle coffin shaped handle so it swells out at both ends and just sort of uh, bookends your hand this is the xl so you've got a little bit more pommel here uh, the regular scythe which is out of um, contoured g10 and 14c28 i believe is a little bit shorter lock, uh, locks into the handle uh, into the hand without any pommel exposed here um, at least in my medium-sized hands here we have this really cool uh, gear pattern backspacer going all the way around, giving you jimping on top where you need it the most with a Pakal style knife like this, because you're gripping with that thumb. You do not want to slide out. You do not want this to fall out of your hand. You don't want it. And this not only stops you from going onto the blade, but it gives you some modicum of control or at least a pitch angle for the blade. And that blade S35 VN with that incredible hawk bill, um, it's just gorgeous. Uh, reaching out to touch someone uh, as a Pical knife does. So it's got that angle. But uh, oftentimes a Pical style knife will put the tip just shooting off into space, which uh, to me I like because it aids in the back fist. You don't have to cant your hand at all because that point is right there. This one, uh, I'm going to come here. You might, to get that jab in, you might need to change it up a little bit. But that's where you get the control with the jimping on the pommel you can use the you can use the thumb to uh change the pitch or change the angle uh and orientation of that tip without canting your wrist so you kind of get the best of both worlds with this blade design because the tip is uh low enough to be useful for uh, all sorts of utility tasks but if you're going to use it to put someone's lights out and you need that tip uh, a little bit further out so you don't have to torque your wrist and, and create impact on your wrist at a weird angle, you can use that jimping on the thumb to reorient the blade. Wow. <laughs> I don't think anyone, that's an exhaustive analysis of uh, Pical of blades, but it, it, it is true. It is true. The less you have uh, that angle reaching outward, the more you need control with the thumb. All right. This is what I was carrying on me today. Let me know what you were carrying. Drop it in the comments below. I had the uh, XL Scythe from DC Blades and uh, Shielden. I had the Hogtooth Knives, EDC Tonto, the beautiful new Viper or uh, Venom Jack from Jack Wolf Knives. Highly recommended, as is the uh, Artisan Cutlery Kami. 
uh, highly recommend that too. If you if you like good knives and you have good taste, you love good design, go for that. Uh, okay, next up, I just wanted to remind y'all if you're interested in the hog tooth knives that I was showing just now. This is my collaboration with Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives. Uh, this is my second collaboration. This is the Nova 2. Um, and it is a, I'm going to bring this down. It is a modern day EDC Kiridashi utility and tactical knife. There we go. Getting uh, that, that ivory G10 always flares out uh, the camera. But that is ivory G10, a beautiful sort of creamy white. Here it looks blown out white, but it is a, creamy creamy white with red liners and a dark acid wash 154 cm deeply hollow ground blade uh it is an exaggerated kiridashi to me uh, uh kiridashi has a less uh pronounced point but i wanted to increase or decrease that angle a little bit for tactical reasons or <laughs> i just like it it's a little more thrusty that way uh but very deeply hollow ground straight edge blade with an upward sweep like a kiridashi makes it very uh, utilitarian um you know that's for all you guys who carry your knives and use them uh but for those of you who carry your knives for self-defense and uh for general um <laughs> well this is this is also for you this is also for you uh it will have a numbered it will be serial numbered. Uh, we're doing something different, and it'll have my logo and the Hogtooth Knives logo on it. Uh, we're doing something different with the serial numbers this time, which is kind of cool. We're personalizing them. Uh, so my brother is a tax nerd. So he's getting, I think it's 315 out of whatever it is, probably be in the 20s or something like that, a low number. But it, whatever your number is, you can have it in there. Uh, so... Um, I don't know, just a little special way of going about it. I know a couple of people have requested numbers that are higher than I think we will go with this order, and I am willing to. Uh, I'm willing to go there. You could even do pi out to like maybe five digits. All right, so this is the uh, Nova Two, uh, an exclusive with the Knife Junkie and Hogtooth Knives. By the way, this also makes for a great summer carry. I mentioned the EDC Tanto is the one that it started it all. What I meant was uh, carrying this led to us co-designing this and the Nova One. Look at those beautiful, beautiful knives. Too many knives, not enough time, not enough money. All right, next up, uh, I wanted to show you the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway Knife, uh, which is uh, coming up tomorrow night. Uh, we had to de delay it by one week this week because of my, uh, my personal summer plans. Uh, but one lucky... Gentleman Junkie will be winning this really cool Kaiser Mini Paragon from RS Bladeworks and uh, Kaiser. A really dramatic recurve Tonto. Uh, it's got this really broad, um, what do you call this, uh, um, a compound ground blade here. You have right here where you might be uh, digging in the deepest, you've got a sort of uh, oblique grind, but the most of it is a thin flat grind on this recurve. And then it comes to a chisel, curved chisel tip. This thing to me looks like a great white shark or something like that. Uh, something in the in the badass shark family, maybe a megalodon. You got the gills there on the um, on the blade, and you've got that opening lozenge. This one I like to open. I, mean, I need to use my right hand. I like to open this one with the uh, hole. You just kind of pop it out of that stiff detent and. The blade is so big, it just follows its momentum out of there. It feels so good in hand. That blade, I, I can't really get over how broad that blade is. Hang on. Let's see. At its broadest. Uh, let's see. At its most broad, it's an inch and three quarters. It's That's big. That is a broad blade, and it starts out pretty thin. Uh, so by the time you get to the edge there, it's wickedly slicey. A very cool knife. This was uh, donated to the channel by uh, Dave of OG Blade Reviews. Dave, thank you so much. Dave uh, is a patron of this channel without being a Patreon member because he has sent me so many knives to give away to you folks. So, uh, oh, I just used folks. I used to use that word a lot for parents, but now I see it's been co-opted. Now it's folks. Uh, so anyway, uh, I would love to give this to one of you awesome people. 
uh, men or women out there, man or woman out there who would love to have this. Uh, all you got to do is go to uh, theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon and sign up to be a gentleman junkie and you could be in the running. So in case you're new, Thursday Night Knives, the live stream every Thursday night, 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube. We give away a knife to our uh, gentleman junkies, our patrons uh, at the highest level. And it's always fun. It's a random generated, uh, randomly generated number sort of deal, but it's all on a wheel. So it's very exciting. You get to see your name spin around and it always comes so close to your name, but then it goes to the next guy. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it, it lands on you. So definitely check that out. Go to the knife slash Patreon and you could win this mini Paragon uh, by Kaiser. I'm going to put this away and say, uh, uh, we will see you uh, in a second for Knife Life News. But I just want, uh, Jim, if you don't mind, to float up that QR code. Just because we've been talking about Patreon, uh, you can scan it right here or go to that address right there. All right. Be right back with Knife Life News. Adventure Delivered, your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash BattleBox. Okay, <laughs> you caught me off guard. Checking out this really cool knife I'm going to show you later. Uh, so this month, August 2024, uh, a great month, no doubt, uh, because Jim was born in this month, I was born in this month, my sister was born in this month, my brother, my parents were born in... No. All right, uh, parents were married in this month. Anyway, I love August, close to my heart. Also, you get the late summer cicadas, and you get the buck of the month. The buck of the month this month is the 113 Ranger Skinner. Now, this is a knife that I uh, was flirting with buying, not, not this buck of the month version, but the standard uh, 420 HC version. I was going to get this buck a long time ago when I was looking for small fixed blades before I started buying customs and really getting into that for figuring out how to make Kydex. And I didn't for some reason, but I, I've always taken a shine to this knife. It's a compact, maneuverable drop point, uh, but it's usually uh, made in 420 HC. This is an S35VN. You've got a nickel silver bolster. So beautiful. And uh, and then behind that, you have, excuse me, black and brown, rich light scales, you know, that black and brown alternation with the Anzo pattern uh, carved in it. I don't think they're calling it that, but that was, that is the Anzo pattern. Um, the, that S35V, thank you. That's a beautiful shot of what I'm talking about. Um, the S35VN blade, of course, has the Paul Boss heat treat, and Paul Boss is the boss of heat treating. So uh, I know that they make the 420 that they serve up on many of their knives. They turn it into a, you know, a really great steel with that heat treat. So they're doing the same thing here with the S35VN. This comes with a black leather sheath. And they're only making 500 of them, and they are available as we are in the middle of August. So uh, if you're a buck collector, jump on that. I think that'd be a cool one to just carry around on the belt. A lot of places you can do that. Most places you can do that. But I'm saying a lot of places you can do that without even raising an eyebrow. So uh, that would be a classy choice. All right, next up from Civivi, um, This I have an incidental Civivi collection. I love it. I can't quit them. I can't quit you, Sabivi. It's like, uh, you know, I get them and I just love them and I keep them, even though my intention is to move them along. Well, this is another one that if I got, I would hold on to because this is a 3.75 inch Sabivi. I love their big, their big stuff. They're not afraid to go big. This is the Tacticorix. Rolls right off the tongue yet again. Tacticorix. It's a big worker. It's a workhorse of a knife, a beefy clip point. Uh, made out of nitro V blade steel. Here we've got their, um, I got to say, this does not appeal to me in this case. But, you know, Civivi, they, they're always doing their wood and their fancy uh, um, damas steels. <clears throat> this one, too many notes for me, but uh, I like that they do it. Uh, the Tacticorix uh, is normally nitro V and a G10 handle with the frag pattern. Over here, it's the wood with the frag pattern. And um, it is a liner lock. Uh, it's out now. Uh, as a matter of fact, I saw Dave's review of this one. So this looks like a, a cool one. I like the imposing um, blade shape. Uh, Jim, could you scroll down to the next one? It might be easier to see the swedge on that one. It's got a really uh, dramatic swedge. Yeah, 
yeah, you can kind of see it there. Uh, the swedge starts right in front of the thumb stud and uh, lands, you know, about a quarter inch from the tip. And to me, it's uh, it reminds me a little bit of the classic Mac V SOG uh, design. But also look at the pommel on this. A beautiful arch pommel for for hooking the thumb over if you need it in reverse grip. And this is one of those knives that you just might need in reverse grip as it's a tactical beefy workhorse. Also, that's a hollow ground uh, Nitro V blade. I mentioned the steel, but not the grind. So um, uh, those Civivi lovers out there and those clip point uh, pocket knife lovers, Tacticorix just might be for you. All right, next up, Smith & Sons, a brand I don't have much exposure to. Uh, but I know that they make uh, that they are a U.S. company that has uh, mixed manufacturing. In this case, they're releasing a fully U.S. made slip joint, and uh, it, this is a beautiful one. I like the blade shape of this a lot. It's called the Marshland Trapper. I mentioned it was a collaboration. This is a collaboration with White River Knives, an amazing knife company uh, who I really actually <laughs> I almost bought one uh, in person at a knife shop. Uh, yes, that's right. I went to a knife shop, an actual one in Delaware. I'm going to have those guys on the show, uh, Willie Knives. Uh, but they had some White River knives, and they are awesome. So anyway, White River uh, helped in the manufacturing of this Smith & Sons Marshland Trapper. And it's a single-edged, or um, well, single-edged, yes, but a single-bladed clip-point trapper with a sweeping blade. I love that, a sweeping edge, I mean. Like, that is a really downward-diving uh, clip point. It's to me something that uh, I really like seeing on a slip joint because it adds in it adds to the the um, cutting power that you have because of that downward uh, angle. And and on a slip joint, you have to be somewhat delicate or mindful of the fact that you're using a smaller non locking knife and if you're if you're horsing it through some material uh you, you're gonna want that downward slant to just help you with the cutting help accelerate the cutting without having to use as much force here's a nice shot jim just put up of it in its very uh slender um uh aspect here you can see the spine and the or you can see that the liners and the spine are beautifully hafted and then you have um the micarta uh scales you can probably also see that it's Torque, you can see the Torx screws there. So this thing you can take apart and maintain, unlike many mod, um, more classical style uh, slip joints. This one is S35VN, full flat ground. Uh, and when is it released? Oh, well, 2.5 ounces. Oh, also, this comes with a belt pouch. It doesn't come with a belt pouch, but you can get an optional belt pouch if you're the kind of guy who doesn't like the slip joint rattling around in the pocket because this is a, a large-ish slip joint with a blade at 3.19 inches available now and and also by the by uh white river knives will be releasing this under their own in their own collection after a, after a while uh, under the name the trailhead trapper so i think that's cool they're collaborating and they're both releasing it in their own product lines uh, but they're calling it a different name because it's a different product coming from a different company all right, last up from Viper Knives, a, a, a company out of Italy that to me has some really cool designs, uh, classy designs. I just like Italian design. What can I say? Um, all right, so this new Viper is called the Oniro, Oniro, O N I R O. Uh, this is by Dennis Simonetti, and or C, I'm sorry, Simonuti. And uh, he is a, a designer of the Radius line. He, he designed the Radius, which won a Best Overall Knife 2019 in, um, at Blade Show. And then I think they won Best Import of the Year that year. The Radius was that uh, uh, thumb stud that was embedded in the handle uh, that ran concentric to the pivot. Uh, interesting. It worked well. I got to pick it up and use it. I haven't seen it like take off. Uh, but an interesting innovation nonetheless. Uh, this, I think, is quite a beautiful and fetching knife. And actually, that blade looks like a Viper Knives blade. If you ask me who made that, I might just guess that. Um, but look at that handle. All the sweeping, swooping ergonomics on this. Uh, it looks like it would be incredibly comfortable in hand. Uh, it also looks like it might, you know, uh, uh, require, uh, or not require, but only allow for certain sort of handholds. Uh, but 
that's just speculation. Just looking at it, it looks like it'd be very comfortable in that uh, saber grip or in the Filipino grip or in the reverse grip, you know, and then, and then when you reverse a knife and pick call it, sometimes those weird, uh, 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 not weird, but sometimes those dramatic swales and grooves don't feel bad against the palm. Other times it's horrible, but, uh, you're probably not using that for this anyway, uh, because this is a, uh, the 3.16 inch uh, blade. So this is Magna Cut. They're doing a lot of firsts here. Magna Cut, Ultim. I think this is the first that Viper has used Ultim. Uh, you can also get six other varieties of uh, of handle if, if Ultim is not your thing. Beautiful leaf shaped blade, as I mentioned. Magna Cut. Oh, their first crossbar lock. That's a biggie uh, for Viper. First crossbar lock. So uh, those of you who try it, let's uh, find out how good they do the crossbar lock. How well. They do the crossbar lock. A lot of uh, companies are doing it, and they're and they're doing it well. And I have a couple coming up here that I'll show you. All right, that's available now. Uh, by the way, that Viper Oniro uh, available now. So check it out if you're interested. All right, we're gonna move on to the. Uh, we're gonna skip over the state of the collection because basically that's the whole topic. Recent acquisitions, uh, recent knives I've gotten that I have uh, reviews to do of, but I wanted to show off before I get to those. But before I get to that, uh, go to the knifejunkie.com slash store if you want to check out some. Uh, we have a lot of everything over there. Uh, Jim works hard on creating t-shirts and other merch. Uh, so definitely go over to the knifejunkie.com slash store and check out what we have to offer <clears throat> over there also you can download the show to your favorite podcast app uh this show is not only visual because of course we like to show off all these beautiful knives we're talking about all these cool uh products and such but if you want to listen to it and listen to the interviews especially i i know that that's a, a favorite way to take in the interviews is by listening go to apple Podcasts, google iheart spotify stitcher tune in all of them we're basically on all of them uh, you can download them there and listen while you're driving in traffic. And uh, just know that I am cursing with you in spirit. All right, coming right up, we're going to get to recent acquisitions over here at the Knife Junkie Podcast. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super sharp crenulated bezel, and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch, the knifejunkie.com slash shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So as I mentioned uh, this past weekend, I we took a nice little couple-day excursion to Rehoboth Beach in Delaware. And uh, Delaware's got some nutty uh, automatic knife laws, but... They have knife stores and we were driving. I can't remember what road we're on, but I'm going to have these people on. They were awesome. And uh, my wife is the one who spotted a, uh, spotted a sign on the side of the road that said Willie knives and it had an arrow. And so we put a bookmark uh, on the map and we were on the run. We had to go check in, uh, but we were going to come back on the way back. Uh, and we did. And it was this knife shop in the, in the, in a basement of a house. Uh, the basement was specially built as a knife shop when they built the house uh, because the gentleman who started it um, has been making knives for had been making knives for many, many years uh, on a farm. And then, well, he started as a 10 year old on his farm and then he started making uh, knives as an adult and a farmer and his kids came into it and they opened a knife shop and it grew and it grew. And this place was such a find out in the middle of farm country in Delaware. Um, but they have an amazing setup there. They have all sorts of like knife events there. Uh, they have uh, people from companies. Uh, I know the guy from Buck is going to be, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name, but the president of Buck, who is last name Buck, is going to be there next week. And uh, they have different events and hammer ins and all sorts of stuff and didn't know about them, stumbled upon them. So we went in there and um, they were so cool. Uh, a brother and sister run the joint uh, who, who were sons and uh, son and daughter of the original uh, Mr. Willie knife maker. They had a lot of great stuff in there. Henry uh, McHenry Williams knives. They had Chris Reeve knives. They had Spartan blades, spider co uh, cold steel. I mean, white river knives, anything, you name it. Almost. They had a lot of, they had a lot of knives in this, 
in this uh, cool space. And it was great talking to them. And of course, uh, it happened to be my birthday on that day. And of course, I had to buy a knife. I would have bought one if it wasn't my birthday. I didn't want to spend too much money because we had just spent some money, but I had to get something. And I got this. And I've been wanting this for literally forever. <clears throat> this is the Tie Light 6 by Cold Steel. This is the Aus 8 version, an old classic standby and uh you know i've wanted it ever since i got this in the late 90s uh the six in or the four inch version i've always loved this knife it's it, for a number of reasons uh it's one of the very few uh cold steel liner locks uh which is kind of unique it is probably the 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 liner lock i trust the most out there and it's a tip of the hat to my heritage with the uh italian switchblade but why did I pick this out of the whole knife shop I was in um, with the six inch Aus 8 blade? Well, because I had recently seen uh, Tomas Alas of Tactical Tavern <laughs> go into town with one of these on a, uh, on a, with one of these on a ballistic dummy. And I was so uh, sort of uh, gobsmacked with what it did, uh, with what it did. I'll just leave it there uh, that I decided I still should get one of these, uh, you know. Even though it's an old knife and I, I kind of, uh, well, I have my base is covered, you know, uh, in a lot of ways, especially considering I have the Chris version. Um, I just had to have it. So thanks, Tomas, for selling me on another knife. And uh, thanks, Cold Steel, for having these, uh, for making these things. But thanks to Willie Knives. I'm going to have them on the show. They were so cool. Um, and such a great story. Uh, I was talking about... Uh, I don't want to say that. I was going to say old man Willie. That's not his name. I can't remember his first name, but we will we will find out. Uh, but the gentleman who started the whole thing, making knives as a 10 year old. Well, his son, Mark, who I was talking to there and who will come on the show, showed me the very first knife he made as a 10 year old from a saw blade. And man, that thing was beautiful. It was a beautiful clip point blade uh, with handle scales, walnut handle scales. And then the very last knife he made before he passed away, which was a gorgeous uh, double edge. It looked, reminded me kind of of a Walter Brend a little bit with an incredible handle. Um, so it was neat to see his very first knife and his very last knife in the case. So thanks to those guys. They also gave me a free t-shirt, which I'll, I will happily show off, um, and wear about town. All right. So the first one, the tie light six, I'm going to be carrying this. This thing is so cool. All right. Next up. Now this is something that came in while I was gone. Uh, that was a, uh, go on. I was gone for two days. Uh, that was a random purchase on Amazon. I was getting stuff for the family. This is something I do sometimes. And, uh, a knife will slip into the old cart. Well, I got another cold steel and this is one I've also wanted for years, uh, from their super budget line. Uh, this is the Canadian belt knife. Um, I've always loved that Canadian belt knife shape. I had one here, uh, maybe a year and a half ago, it was on loan from Kepmuk. I think Kepmuk Nesshart loaned that to me. Uh, that one was an LT Wright, um, a much more refined knife than this, but this thing, I love it. I love it. And I just wanted this shape blade in my collection. Who knows? Maybe I'll pursue it and someday get a nice, nicer version of it. Um, but this is a $14 knife. So it's, it's, uh, easy for me to throw in the cart and, uh, afford and uh, maybe it's affordable to most people. Um, and I know not everyone can, uh, even 14 bucks these days is, uh, you know, throwing around money. And I will admit it, this is a totally, um, what do you call it, uh, gratuitous purchase, but it will go to use. It will go to use probably in the uh, kitchen in the back porch where there's a lot of cutting. Um, not food, of course, but uh, anyway. Uh, Injection molded handle with a three quarter tang. Uh, these have, um, and it's the German 4116 uh, Krupp, Krupp steel. Uh, and it's got a, a, a gentle hollow grind and that classic Canadian belt knife handle. It's got sort of a, a um, Mora esque drop sheath here that I think, I mean, I guess it's set up for this. But I think they they have a number of different knives that can fit this sheath, if I'm not mistaken. I'm probably out. All right, so I got this, but I wanted to compare it with this. This is from the same line. This is the Roach Belly. 
And I've had this one for years. And I tell, like to tell the story that uh, I met a guy. He was a cousin of a friend of mine who was living basically the life of a modern day hobo. And by hobo, I don't mean bum. I mean hobo traveling around. Uh, he did ride the rails at some points. He said he could. Uh, but just uh, uh, what do you call it? hitchhiking and uh, just making his way across the country. He was doing it for two years by the time I met him. And this was his one and only knife. He had a roach belly with the original um, nylon pouch sheath. And he said it was incredible. And uh, it was funny because uh, when I met the guy, this was a long time ago. I met the guy. I was like, uh, Oh, you carry a cold steel and you've been like surviving for two years, which one? And I was hoping it was going to be the trail master or something glorious. And he pulled this out and I was like, Oh, but it stuck in my mind and I ended up getting it to practice making Kydex sheaths. And, um, I fell in love with it. I, uh, did the grooving on the handle there. Uh, I wrapped it in jute, did all that. I love this. This is my car knife. This is in the center console of my car. It's, it's done all sorts of duty. Uh, None of it glorious, but I love this knife. So I'm hoping that the Canadian belt knife uh, sort of fulfills a similar purpose. I'm going to probably do a little customization of it and then stash it somewhere. Uh, maybe it's in my wife's car because I don't think she's got a fixed blade at the ready. She's got a bug out bag with a fixed blade in it, but or a get home bag. But I think she needs something like this. So maybe this is where this ends up. But um, I got to say these super cheap uh, under $20 cold steel fixed blades are awesome and they have uh, four or five different different models of them we also have the hunter pendleton hunter version of it um really great inexpensive knives so if you're um that's what i love about being a knife junkie is that uh yeah i have some really awesome expensive knives but i i, I love the inexpensive ones too it's just it's just knives so if you have a hankering and a use, or maybe you don't even have a use, uh, this might be the knife to throw some money away on these, these cheap ones, because you're not spending too much and they will get used. This one's already opened a package. What was in it? Another knife. And we're going to see that one in a minute. All right, next up, this one was sent to me by Vosteed. They do such cool stuff. Kind of came out of nowhere. The first knife I had by them, they sent me a couple of years ago, was the Morgan, an awesome chef's knife that uh, we still use. It's pretty. It's a pretty great knife. Um, their folders are pretty great too. I've had a number of them. I've given them away here on the show. Uh, this one they just sent to me, and I think I'll probably keep this one. It is so cool. Uh, the parallel. It is super thin. 14C 28N a uh, sheep's foot blade here uh, with a gentle belly and a and a um a downward placed tip swedge and all that great blade but the thinness of this thing is the USP for sure you've got these aluminum I'm sorry these are steel scales uh but they're very thin and very close together and then you do have an aluminum anodized backspacer and thumb stud and their crossbar lock and this crossbar lock is interesting because right there, it has a, a little thing to get over. I'm going to use my right hand here. So if you if you pull the, the uh, lock all the way back and flip it all the way in, it will come all the way home. But if you at any point let go, it will stop at this sort of uh, three quarters point or or. Sorry, it keeps falling out of my head. It'll stop right here at this point, and then it has to get over a little detent. It's not a detent ball. It's a little bit of sculpting on the back of the tang, uh, but that's that stops it from fully um, from fully closing if you let up on the lock. Uh, this is one that's been riding in my back in my back pocket for about a week. It is super useful. This thing is a do everything knife it also has really nice ergonomics though it looks angular and like it might be uncomfortable uh it ain't especially when you have your uh finger up here this i i find that if you use this in that sort of draw cut utility grip with your forefinger up the blade your middle finger nestles nicely into the square um finger choil and makes for a very very comfortable pull cut uh, this one uh, I am liking a lot. Wait, let me see. It is a smaller one at, uh, let's see, what is that? 
sorry, if I measure from the edge, it's just under three inches. <laughs> there you go. There's your scientific measurement, just under three inches, uh, but a very useful and fun to carry knife because it's so small and so thin. I have a feeling this might be one that my wife tries to steal because she likes them real thin because she she wears in the waist in the waistband and you know girls pockets are small and and uh, you know she doesn't like anything too bulky in the waistband uh, but I wanted to show it off with the uh, real quick before I put it away with the bug out to me this is kind of a a, a bug out like knife uh, a little bit smaller but it's got the same I'm going to use my daughter's term it's got the same vibe it's this is thinner than the bug out, but altogether, uh, the bug out is larger. It's it's lighter because of the the materials. But this this is kind of the same style knife to me, and my carry usage. Uh, either one of these these are kind of interchangeable in my mind. You got great uh, axis lock action on this. Uh, I, I got to say the axis lock on this one is is a lot smoother than the Vostede. But the Vostede has a very stout Omega spring. So as long as you hold it all the way back and it comes in all the way in, uh, you're fine. And I'm talking about in terms of fidgetability, if that's an issue, uh, you can make it work for sure. And it's a break-in period, like on this next one, which is also a bar lock. Um, this one came to me, it felt, I'm not going to say rough, but it felt a little stiff and, I don't know, 50 flips. And this thing is buttery smooth even less probably 25 uh, openings of this it's buttery smooth this is the uh new hound the hound and this hound will hunt uh from kubi it is awesome i really like it it's got a, a three point well i'm gonna give you another unscientific measurement here a three and a half inch blade 14 c 28 n nice and sharp this one uh was also with me and uh I actually ended up kicking out the SOCOM Elite from my pocket once we got to our destination, Rehoboth Beach, and uh, and started tooling around because I put on my shorts, and this is very nice and comfy in the shorts uh, because it's light, but it's nice. It's got a it's got a decent size half inch thick handle. You know, it's it's substantial, but it's nice and light. Part of that is due to these the four lightning holes on both sides so you get a lot of weight relief on the liners nice thick steel liners here and then uh traction g10 this comes in a number of different colors and it comes in uh, a black blade option also i love the look of this blade to me it reminds me a little bit of a like a scalper or a uh um, um oh now now it's totally, it, I'll move on to who the designer is here, and that word will come to mind in a moment. This is designed by Max Chuk. Chuk, I think is how you pronounce it. Beautiful swedge on that blade. He's done a lot of knives uh, with uh, Tucson and others. Very cool designs from him. Nice fold over, deep carry pocket clip. A unique shape, but not too unique that it's goofy. And carries nicely in shorts. Look at the angle, or in khakis. Look at the angle of the of the blade there. It's perfect for those kind of pockets, non-jeans pockets. And uh, so how is the how is the action? The action is incredible. You have a uh, ball bearing action on this uh, Kubi and, and the crossbar lock is great. I love it. So they've done a really great job. At first I thought, oh, it's a little gritty. It was, it was a little factory gritty, but I didn't have to take it apart at all. I just had to use it a couple of times or you know, flip it open, say 25 times, and it got butter smooth. Uh, here's the Kubi that I will never get rid of. Uh, this is the Flash, and this is my travel to Blade Show knife. I've taken this to Blade Show a number of times because it's a really great knife. It's about 3.75 inches, uh, D2 blade steel, cool design, great action, stout, a very stout uh, build. But 40 bucks. And if it got taken by TSA, I'd be bummed, but I wouldn't be heartbroken. Um, so Kubi makes some pretty awesome knives. It looks like their logo is changing up here. Uh, I'm going to do a full review on the Kubi Hound here and uh, uh, do some comparisons and other such things probably coming up this week. Uh, but I, I really, really like this knife. I love the profile of the blade and the handle is super ergonomic and comfortable also whoops also great in that reverse grip and max chuchuk thought of putting 
the proud jimped gear spaced backspacer here or gear pattern backspacer so a great place to rest your thumb uh in reverse grip what i was going to say is it reminds me a little bit of a winkler belt knife that uh, that that profile just a little bit sleeker and with that long swedge this is going to be great for uh penetration on a thrust all right this next one i can't officially call uh an acquisition because it's not it hasn't been given to me but it's new, it's exciting, and I'm getting a sneak peek along with a, a couple of others, and that is the new Dirk Pinkerton design. And I'm not sure what he's calling this, honest to goodness, but this is one that will be uh, coming out under his shingle, and I love that. I love, Dirk has it down, man. Uh, he's got a bunch of designs with the companies we love, like Concept, Kaiser, et cetera, et cetera, uh, beyond EDC. Um, but he also releases folders under his own shingle, uh, Pinkerton Designs, and then he also does handmade custom stuff. So I love his designs. I love his work in all of its different iterations. This one is so cool. He sent me a text not long ago showing me a few of the, these prototypes. So this in a couple of different handles and blade treatments. And he asked me the question, I hope he doesn't mind me saying, does this belong in the world? And uh, I said, yeah, hell yes, it belongs in the world. This is a beautiful 3.6 inch Warncliffe blade. That's a true Warncliffe uh, descending in a curved uh, shape from the thumb, uh, from the Ricasso down to the blade and uh, down to the tip with a fiercely straight edge. It is so nice, man. I love this thing. Titanium, a frame lock with that cool curved, uh, lock cutout. I am not sure what uh, who manufactured this, but there you got some of the Pinkerton half scoop jimping there. I love that. Reminds me of file work. You have it there and here and here. Very handy spots to have it. Be nice to have it here too. Um, but you have it uh, extend from the blade jimping, which is nicely sharp and engaging you have a really nice fuller on this blade which you can you can use to sorry which you can use to uh reverse you know spidey flick it look at that in hand it is so comfortable he does these killer ergonomics again you can see like i was showing you on the kami before these wide chamfers um give you flat surfaces so that it's not going to turn in your hand but it also gives you the feel the comfort of contouring i love it i think it's i think it's super cool and uh, kind of brilliant on dirk's park here, here on dirk's part here's another version of that on his um inversion now this is the one again also released under pinkerton designs you can see his logo right under the wave there um love this one so hopefully the same manufacturer that made this made this they feel similar they feel real real nice and then of course i want to show this off this also has the chamfering this is the new um uh, banjara and you can see even though it's got this really nice uh, uh concentric milling feels really good in hand it's got it's got that same wide chamfering contouring so really cool stuff from dirk pinkerton as always this prototype uh here i am really looking forward to i i mean i i want this knife uh i want this one right here i would take this i would i would take this prototype if i had to i love this thing it is really cool way up my alley and uh dirk nicely done yes it belongs in the world if you think it belongs in the world drop a comment below and uh and we'll let them know okay next up this is a super cool one i've been looking to get one of these knives for a long time just hadn't until i just did and uh, he had a sale recently, but I missed the sale. So uh, I could have gotten this for $20 less, but that's okay. Uh, this is the Polite But Dangerous Tools Wrapped Dagger. Polite But Dangerous Tools. He was on the show. Uh, Sam, great guy. And actually, brother of another guy who was on the show. I'll show you his knife in a second here. But uh, Polite But Dangerous Tools, they, uh, he, he does a lot of... Uh, blending again blending ancient or or um primeval knife making if you will uh with the modern so you you've got this 1095 
uh, blade that has been manufactured in a somewhat modern <laughs> realm, but it's been napped, or it looks like it's been napped. It's been um, turned into something that looks ancient. I, I just love his work, uh, uh, Polite But Dangerous Tools, uh, because of that. Um, that factor. What am I trying to say? I just like how they look old. You know, I mentioned I was waxing poetic about the artifact nature of the new Venom. This has the same sort of uh, same sort of grip on me. Uh, this came, it's very sharp uh, and I just stropped it and made it even more sharp. Super thin, really nice Sukamaki wrap over the jute. This is my first jute and Sukamaki. I love it together. So nice. This was bigger than I expected. Uh, the blade here is four inches, I believe, four and a half inches. Um, and it's just really comfortable in hand with that, with that shaped blade, but it's nice and thin. I think that's what I just got this. So I haven't even carried it yet, but I think I'm going to love how thin this overall package is. Uh, he also shipped it with a, uh, in the waistband carry, uh, uh, leather fob sort of thing. And I love that this Kydex sheath has this leather wrapping sometimes he does uh, this sort of line work um and does designs or uh sometimes on uh survival knives he'll put survival info on there but it all looks really old and kind of primitive and i i really dig that and speaking of primitive it's kind of in line with why i love this knife so much i've been carrying this primitive wicket by knives by nuge all summer long right next to my skin and uh it's because it's nice and thin, and I love those natural materials. You you know, when you wrap a piece of steel, it's a lot thinner than when you put pieces of uh, G10 or micarta on both sides. So uh, it lends itself to carry. I've been carrying this thing like crazy. I love it. I love this thing. I want to get a bigger version of it. <laughs> uh, and then here is, uh, real quick, here's the Fenrir by Vandreer Knives. And these two guys are brothers. So this is the first uh, brother. Here, here, let me sh hold it up close. This is the first uh, brothers collection uh, I have in my collection. In other words, the first two knives I have by brothers in my collection. That's the Vandrer Fenrir and the um, Wrapped Dagger by Polite But Dangerous Tools. Such a cool knife. Okay, lastly, this is a really cool uh, recent acquisition. And it just came in, basically. The brand new Work Tough Gear uh, V44X Bowie. This thing is tremendous. Put that down for a sec. Uh, so this is the second run of the Work Tough Gear um, v44 bowie it's in k329 k329 steel whatever that is i'm unfamiliar with that steel it's got some schmutz on the blade here uh but look at that beautiful marine raider bowie style blade um this is my second work tough gear knife i every time they come out with something new i can't uh i can't help but check it out and oftentimes i kind of really pine for them but then i missed the drops this one i made sure not to miss and the cool thing was i was out uh, my wife and i went out on a date uh to see a band an old friend of hers uh is in a band and they they did a sort of reunion like uh he said if you want to see a bunch of guys going through a midlife crisis on stage come check us out so it was awesome they were great uh but i was like look look uh look baby uh there's a knife that's dropping uh It'd be really good for the channel, and it's a great knife, but I don't know. It's dropping tonight. Like, that was such a passive-aggressive move. I don't know why I didn't just say, look, babe, I got to bust out in the middle of our date to order this knife. But she was so cool with it. She's like, well, at 8 o'clock, go out in the lobby and order the knife. I was like, that's all I needed to hear. Thank you, baby. I will. I have an awesome wife. I have a great family. What can I say? I'm a lucky man. Um, but I told her also that this is, uh, you know, this is... A V44 Bowie. This is a Marine Raider Bowie made by Work Tough Gear, and she understood what that meant. She understood that that meant uh, important stuff. She did not. But uh, so here's one. Here's another Marine Raider style Bowie. This is the the uh, the Western Bowie uh, from 
Cold Steel, same sort of uh, deep uh, widening belly here, but this is taken to an exaggerated uh, level, which I love. So in essence, that triangle that is formed here from that downward sweeping edge, yes, again, it acts a bit like a recurve uh, because it traps material in that triangular uh, area. Uh, all that said, I will not be using this probably for anything um, because I have this work tough gear knife and this is this has been used enough out outside that uh, I might just leave this one pristine. What do you think? Is that a wimpy thing for me to do? Probably. But I just for now, I want to leave this thing as it is. I find it such an arrestingly beautiful blade shape and I've been wanting it ever since Scab got one. Uh, whatever it was, a year and a half ago, maybe at this point, that uh, I just had to jump on this um, on this drop. Uh, knurled G10. So you, you got uh, little peaks, little diamonds uh, knurling here. Gently contoured from this, uh, from this aspect. Orange liners, very nice. And then you've got that nice wide pommel. A little bit longer handle. I got to say, if I had one criticism, I'd say it's the blade to handle ratio. For me, I need it. I would take a shorter handle or a longer blade, but that's just me being a shallow esthete and looking at the aesthetics. What can I say? Yeah, I used that word with Rob Bixby and he called me out for being a, a snob. I said, I said, my followers, my viewers can get with the word esthete. If they've never heard it before, they just think aesthetic and athlete and put them together. Makes sense. I'm an aesthetic athlete. All right. Thanks for joining me on this uh, journey through my recent acquisitions. Uh, I'm really excited to, to dig into all of these and uh, do reviews on most of them. Probably the tie light and the, and the other cold steel won't, won't, I've, I've should have had them years ago. I probably won't do reviews of these, but all these other ones you'll definitely see close up on the channel. Uh, be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives. And if you're a gentleman junkie, which I highly urge you to become, uh, you can win this in our random um, generated giveaway for uh, gentleman junkie patrons. And that is this beautiful RS designed, RS Knifeworks designed mini Paragon. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.